Mr. Bradshaw at AdSomeToYourIncome.com here to look at some quotes and then stories that deal with perspective on making money not because it's about the money. Yes, my message is finding ways to add some to your income. Let's add to our income. Basic premise is there when you have more money, you will be happier because of the how you are able to spend that money. This video focuses in on how it's actually not the money that's the thing you need to focus on. By focusing on money, you become messed up, <laughs> okay? And later, as I said, I'm gonna go into a few stories that deal with money and focusing on the money and becoming messed up. All right, let's dive in. So it's not about the money. This is one of my things that I like to say. I, I need for each of you to just take a moment and work through these quotes with me on how, yes, we're looking at ways to add to our income, not to make a lot of money. Here we go. So money comes and goes, but time can't be replaced. So my friend Laura Flora said this one day, and I just loved it. I wrote it down right away. It was one of those things I knew would stick with me. She was talking about how when they were first married and they had their first kid or two, and it was just so hard to get diapers and make everything work out. And she realized that they were working. She was working. Her husband was working. They were trying to get an extra amount of money and they realized time can't be replaced how to be able to get enough money to spend the time how you want to spend the time this next quote comes from a person who went door to door on mansions and asking the people how did you make all your money one of his takeaways was that when you take your mind off of the money you earn more you see, if, if you want to become extremely wealthy, if that's your goal, if you want to make a lot, then you got to figure out ways to help a lot of people. And then the money will come to you. If you focus on becoming extremely wealthy and only doing things that's going to make you extremely wealthy, you're probably not going to become extremely wealthy. Stories later on can help confirm that. Ryan's findings are in a book called Rich Like Them. If you'd like to read a great book about riches and how to become wealthy rich like them is one of those books dalai lama says that the man sacrifices his health in order to make money then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health <laughs> balance is one of the things i'm saying in this when it's not about the money 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 if you're chasing after it you're just going to get exhausted however according to this pin i found on pinterest by 6 a.m success money is like a shadow Try catching it, you can't, but if you'll just move forward, it follows you. Money, it can't buy happiness. It can buy the kind of misery that you prefer, though. <laughs> happiness can come as a result of what the money will do for you. You can find yourself getting happier. And a book I've read to, to quote that is called Happy Money. However, a lot of money isn't necessarily going to make you happy. There's this balance. I almost sound like I'm speaking out of both sides of my mouth. So you got to really listen to this message. Money isn't the most important thing in life. But it's reasonably close to the oxygen on the got to have a scale, according to Zig Ziglar, right? Oh, it's, I almost feel as even I'm saying this, you've got to listen to what's really coming behind these words. All right, so here's another one. I have enough money to last me the rest of my life unless I spend something. This is Jackie Mason. This is getting really close to it. This thought right here of, I have plenty of money unless I buy something. All right, so having enough money, knowing that you're rich. And you can subscribe below. I have another video about being rich. You can take a moment right now and hit subscribe. I've got a great few videos about having this balance of rich. If you're not getting this, if you don't believe me, you could just move on or subscribe and keep listening to the message. The message is people say money's not the key to happiness, but I always figure if you have enough money, you can have a key made, said Joan Rivers. 
there's another way of saying it. A wise man will have money in his head, but not in his heart. You set your heart on money, you're going to live a miserable life. If you are money smart and you think about ways to add some to your income and you make more money and then you use that money in ways that are helpful to yourself, to others, you're going to be rich. If you only think about your own advancement, if you are only worried about your success, you're going to run out of fuel. But when you get to the point that you find that there is something bigger than yourself, there's this motivation that happens, and it's self-sustaining, according to Elaine Chow. You see, when you find within the passion, purpose, drive, and you become an emotionally fueled performer, you are a powerhouse. People may laugh, they might reject you, people might insult you, but they can never stop you, said Steve Siebold. You get to this point where you care so much about other people, and you are ready to help other people. That It doesn't matter for you when you're gonna get paid. I don't care when I get paid, said Barb Dopp. I take care of people. Seek not for riches, but for wisdom, and behold, the mysteries of God shall be unfolded unto you, and then shall you be made rich. In this process, when you actually succeed, don't forget the responsibility of making someone else succeed with you, says Antonio Novelli. All right, being more attractive, getting more recognition, making more money, provide only a fleeting feeling of relief. And then you're unsatisfied again. How to get to the point that you're truly satisfied. You know within you, you are rich, and it's no longer about the money. It's this. It's kind of a long quote, but I decided to keep all of it. It's this moment. You decide to practice your art, your music, your singing, your dancing, your acting, your drawing, your painting, your sculpting, your poetry, your fiction, your essays, your repertoire, no matter how well or how badly, not to get money and not to get fame, but to have the experience of becoming you. For that, to find out what's really inside of you. And you grow your soul. A sailing quote for you. To reach port, we must sail. Sometimes without the wind. Sometimes with the wind. Sometimes against it. But we must not drift or lie at anchor. I'll move my face so you can see that. Says Oliver Weldon Holmes. Now for the stories. Midas. Midas, who wishes to have it to where everything he touches turns into gold. Everything turns right into this gold right here. Foolish. How truly foolish. For, after he'd spent some while turning lots of things into gold, he realized he couldn't eat food. And when his daughter came home from school, he realized a moment too late, unable to convince her not to touch him, she was also turned into gold. He then had a wish back, the wish that he'd made. Better to wish to be happy and have enough, enough food, enough to get by happily. Aladdin. So most of you, you know the rags are richest story of Aladdin, right? But this story is also a proper balance and of taking ethical action. So he starts out as a street rat. He quickly learns of his secret powers of being able to ask for what he wants. And before you know it, he rises to princehood. It seems almost instant, right? He chose to be great. He lied. His lying catches up with him because he becomes so overfocused on becoming what Jasmine wants. In this story, he's so working to be what she can marry, and yet has this weakness. Jafar, the other individual, is very quick to point out of his weakness. And he fights for his own position to become Sultan and marry Jasmine. What I find interesting about Aladdin's story and, and watching, of course, you're rooting for Aladdin, 
I find it interesting that in most of the versions I've come across, it says that Aladdin had three wishes. However, there are some versions out there that say there were no limits to the wishes. He had limitless wishes. And that's more true to how life is. Jack and the Beanstalk. Now, e each of these are children's stories, and yet there's so much to learn about them when it comes to it's not about the money. So Jack and the Beanstalk. All right, so imagine in the story that you're the mother. Okay, you're a single mom. You don't have very much. You guys are living basically in poverty, and your kid takes the one thing of value. What is that? Is that time? What's what's the one thing of value? He goes and trades for three magic beans. All right, what if someone says, I figured out the magic formula. Are you like the mom and you just, yeah, right, take the beans, toss them out the window. Okay, well, the beanstalk grows anyway. Kid climbs up it, disappears up this big old beanstalk. Now, now switch perspectives. Jack is climbing up the beanstalk. He's doing all that hard work. Okay, he has to go up to the castle, knock, be bold. He has to like go into the kitchen. He has to worry about becoming dinner. And then he gets golden eggs because he steals the golden goose. Right? He steals the production of it. He doesn't he doesn't just steal the eggs, he steals the production. He brings the goose home to his mother. Now, why is it? Why is it that the mom she invites Jack back into the house. So is she not the one that's giving? She opens up her house to him, brings him back. All right, and what about the the wife? The wife who's giving, the wife of the giant, right? Is she not the one that's also helping Jack to become a success? All right, so Jack shows up the second time. He takes the harp, the magic harp. <laughs> I realize nowadays most of us have one of these. It's Alexa, right? Alexa, play Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> she, she does this for us. The person in Jack's life that was the closest to him got upset with him, tossed out the beans. Didn't stop him from doing the work. And going and being bold, completing what he needed to complete, so that number one, the terrible giant is killed. Cut the giant in this story happens to be the one who covets. He, Jack does it with a purpose to help out his mom and make that great difference in their lives, not for the money, but for the difference in their lives. And I will say that they all lived richly ever after. May you learn from these stories and know how to focus on adding to your income so that you have happiness. I look forward to seeing you on the other side.